Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this episode. We're going to cover a few news stories today about things going on in the EV marketplace. So let me get right into it. Now, first story I'm talking about today is the median range of fully electric vehicles in the U.S. And I think if we look at the U.S., we can characterize the rest of the world as well. It's now exceeded 250 miles in last year, in 2020. And that's great news for promoting EVs to replace internal combustion vehicles. Now, according to the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy in the U.S., for the first time, the median range of all electric vehicles offered for sale or lease was more than 250 miles per charge. Now, that's nearly four times what the median range was nine years ago in 2011, when it was only 68 miles per charge. Now, to be clear, the median range isn't the um, average range. That would be the mean range. The median range is the middle value. So there must be as many EVs with a longer driving range as there are with less range. Hopefully that explains it up a little bit. This is excellent news. And with technology advancements and greater EV efficiencies, we seem to be coming up on 300 miles soon. While many people may not actually need their car to have 300 plus miles of range, of course, for many, the perception is that it does. And that becomes their reality. So mainstream adoption of EVs won't be possible until the average has at least as much driving range as the average uh, ICE vehicle does today. Combine that with future cost parity, increased charging infrastructure, and lower total cost of ownership, the movement towards more EV adoption is certainly going in the right direction. Now, my next story is about Tesla and their Q4 vehicle production and deliveries. Of course, it was a fantastic year for Tesla in hitting the goals set by Elon Musk. They produced and delivered half a million vehicles in line with their most recent guidance, which is fantastic news. Now, in addition, Model Y production in Shanghai has begun with deliveries expecting to begin shortly or early part of this year. Total 2020 production was 509,737 units and deliveries were 499,550 units. Now, Tesla states that their delivery count should be viewed as slightly conservative as they only count a car as delivered if it is transferred to the customer and all the paperwork is done and correct. Now, final numbers could vary by up to half a percent is what Tesla says. And I think it was a great job factoring in those units that would have been in transit and not just delivered to customers in time and so forth, especially when you had a quarter that had the holiday month in December and, of course, with ongoing COVID issues. So a big congratulations to Tesla on a great 2020, despite the challenges of shutdowns and all this kind of stuff going on. And it should be an even better year this uh, for them this year. Will they hit the 1 million unit number? They could, it could be possible for them. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, Tesla has also officially launched the Model Y standard range now with that optional third row that people were looking at. They've updated their Model Y configurator with the new standard range rear wheel drive variant. Scrolling, if you go a bit deeper into the Model Y build process, it reveals the option for that third row seating. The Model Y standard range has an EPA estimated range of 244 miles. It carries a starting price of $41,990 US and selecting the quote seven seat interior option adds another $3,000 US to the price tag. I think it's great on Tesla for offering this. I'm personally not a really a big fan of this since these seats are very tiny and I'm not tiny. They're very small with limited head and leg area, but hey, you know, for those with small kids or pets, that extra seating space may work for them. And staying with Tesla, they have, there is some reports now that they are going to build a $25,000 electric car from China as early potentially as 2022. They may bring that vehicle to market sooner than what everybody's thought. Now, there is a report, as I said, that came out of China that the automaker has already approved a smaller EV that could begin production as early as next year, coming out for 2022. Tesla's strong sales in the country and China, of course, have helped push plans for a cheaper uh, EV. It's reported the vehicle design was approved last September and the first prototypes of the vehicle could be ready in March of this year. We'll see. The entry-level EV uh, should be based on the Model 3 chassis and could cost between 160,000 to 200 Chinese yuan or about 25 to $30,000 Canadian. 
Remember that during Tesla's Battery Day event last year, CEO Elon Musk did reveal that they will be building a $25,000 EV. That price point was achievable because of the new 4680 battery cells and the integrated battery packs also announced during the event and all the other uh, lower cost uh, measures that Tesla was taking. So since then, they've begun to hire uh, for the China Design Center as well, which will be the first of its kind for the automator, automaker excuse me, outside of the U.S. This is great news for a truly mass market EV adoption, and let's keep our fingers crossed that this happens. Switching gears to GM, they've announced this rebranding around EVs, and they've launched this gener Generation E ad campaign. Um, they've announced that new campaign centered around an inflection point moment, as they call it, it sees in electric vehicles. Now, the campaign's called Everybody In, and it coordinates with a co comprehensive effort to revamp the brand's image, redesign the company's logo, and signify that electric vehicles are a central focus for the company's development and marketing efforts. Stuff I love to hear. Nobody will be left out insists one of the ads, suggesting that GM will have an affordable vehicle soon after the 112,000 or so Hummer EV Edition 1 and the Cadillac Lyric that uh, it's shown so far from the Altium vehicle family. Now, the new logo will effectively replace the current brand mark on the vehicles, signs, and materials, although GM logo won't necessarily be on every vehicle. It marks the most significant change to the GM logo since 1964. The campaign will focus on three areas, exciting a new generation of buyers and accelerating adoption, great, demonstrating GM's expertise in the field and the launch of 30 EVs globally by 2025, believe it when I see it, and showcasing the range and power of the Altium platform, love it. So this seems that GM is continuing to further its pledge to go all in on electric vehicles and I'm very excited about the future from GM. Now, one of the companies I mentioned in my last episode was the Chinese startup Byton, and I received some comments from people wondering if they were still in business and if, you know, they were actually deliver something this year. Well, we now know for sure that they still have a future. Uh, Foxconn, which is the Taiwanese firm best known for contract manufacturing Apple electronics, is helping to prop up Byton. The two companies have signed a strategic cooperation framework with the aim of finally getting the Byton M Byte electric crossover into production by next year, 2022. Under the agreement, Foxconn will provide manufacturing expertise as well as solid operational management experience and, of course, industrial resources, which they have a lot of, to aid in the production launch of the M Byte. Foxconn will also invest around $200 million into the project as well, and I know M uh, Byton's needing money. M-Byte crossovers will still be built at Byton's Nanjing China factory, and Byton began ramping up pre-productions, of course, uh, there in early 2020, but then they ran out of money as the coronavirus pandemic hit China, and they temporarily suspended operations to conserve their cash flow. So hence the need for a Foxconn partnership, as well as uh, delaying to 2022 from the originally planned United States launch date of 2021. So good luck to Byton. Now, last uh, story today is I don't really talk a lot about China most times because so much going on, but I saw this announcement and I thought I would mention it. Uh, by the way, I will be looking at some episodes focused on the Chinese EV marketplace soon, so stay tuned for that. Now, Chinese car manufacturer NIO has recently unveiled its fourth electric car model, the NIO ET7, a highly advanced flagship sedan based on the NEO, the NEO ET preview concept from 2019. The NEO ET7 is offered with two battery options, a 70 kilowatt hour and a 100 kilowatt hour for an NEDC range of, re, of re, respectively, excuse me, more than 500 kilometers or 311 miles and more than 700 kilometers or 434 miles. Remember, these are NEDC. In the future or late 2022, there will be a 150 kilowatt battery pack version that should be able to go more than 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles NEDC on a single charge. 
The car has received a dual motor all wheel drive powertrain with a peak system output of 480 kilowatts and 850 newton meters of torque and will achieve acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, 62 miles an hour in 3.9 seconds. Boy, that's a lot to say. The ET7 is expected to be very comfortable for a car long distance traveling. It has smarter suspension, heating ventilation, and even massage on the seats as standard comes with a nice panoramic glass roof, a very modern and advanced dashboard with HUD as standard, a 10.2 inch instrument cluster, 12.8 center display, as well as 23 speakers, all standard. Also comes with highly advanced autonomous driving technology, including many state-of-the-art solutions like 11 uh, cameras, LiDAR and Atom, what they call their Neo supercomputing system. The car is basically hardware ready for autonomous driving and the features will be offered through a monthly subscription service. Hmm, sounds familiar. The Neo ET7 can be pre-ordered now in China, but customer deliveries are expected no earlier than the first quarter of next year, 2022. Prices range from about 70,000 US to about 82,000 US dollars. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you enjoyed those stories. Thanks very much for tuning in, especially watching on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you have, please uh, spread the word about my show. Tell others about it if you like it. Hopefully I can get more subscribers up. And of course, continue to put your comments in the comment where you feel like you wanna do it. Thank you, I try to answer each and every comment. Of course, always humbly thankful my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. Thank you very much. And for those that make the occasional donation to myself, I am truly blessed and very humbled when I get those kind of things in. Believe me, folks, I can't express that enough. So thank you very much for that. Of course, you know, we're still getting into situations now where things are going to get a little worse before they get better. Uh, I continue to keep everybody in the thoughts and prayers uh, during the COVID crisis. Please stay safe. Follow public health guidelines. It's so important now, folks, to do that. We're, we're going to get through this. We just need some more time. So please do that. And, uh, you know, continue to follow the EV marketplace. There's tons of stuff going on, not just with Tesla, but all kinds of other folks. So it's exciting. It's dynamic. Continue to watch. And until the next show, when I can get a bunch more stories together and tell you some things that I think you'd be interested in, everybody stay safe. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.